Oh, hello. <laughs> Got another list of things to talk about, so time for chewing the fat. This uh, little occasional episodic series that I do where uh, I get things that I want to chat about and, well, mostly transformer things, sometimes non transformer things, just want to talk about and put it out there. So I've got a few things I want to discuss and uh, let's get on with it. First things first, a uh, new subscriber who's just joined. Uh, Pred, aka Destruction Snake Pit. Cheers, chap. Yeah, the only one. And uh, yeah, that's that out of the way. So, where to start? I think I can say today. I finally ordered my evasion mode Optimus Prime from the Age of Extinction line. It's been a long time coming. I've been meaning to get this character for quite a while now. But the thing is, I didn't just want any old evasion mode Optimus Prime. Don't get me wrong, the, the, the basic one in the G1 colours is great and all, but that's not the Prime that I want. I want a Prime that looks more like the Prime in the movie, you know, the one that ends up in the garage, the one that wakes up and goes mental and anyway that looks like the uh, the, uh, the, the the rusty truck one. That's the one I want. Now obviously there's been a myriad of different versions of this character have been produced. I think was, was it 10 or 11 at last count? 10, 10 or 11 different repaints? And most of them are G1 colours, but there are a few that aren't. And the one that I wanted was the Japanese exclusive stage Rusty Optimus Prime. Now I've been looking on Kapow Toys, and Kapow Toys got an early stock of the, uh, the, the figure in. And we're selling them at a discounted price for a $39.99. This was before I did my overtime and had my extra money available. So I was watching it thinking, oh, I really want to buy one of those. And uh, as it happened, I waited and waited until my overtime money had gone in before I decided to, to buy one. And by then it was too late. They'd sold out, out of stock. Couldn't get one. So I've been waiting and waiting for Kapow Toys to get restocked. In the meantime, the price has gone up to $44.99, which is still cheaper than what this figure has been offered to elsewhere. I mean, I think it's it's about you can, you can get it for about 51 quid off Amazon. Um, Big Bad Toy Store are doing it for I think about $69. And then if you go on eBay, the uh, the eBay fleeces are asking over a hundred quid for this character, which is ridiculous. I mean, I'm not paying that much. I mean, I've got this rough rule of thumb that I'm working to. The most I've ever paid for a Transformer toy up to now is 45 quid. And at the moment, that's the most I want to pay for a Transformers toy. It'd have to be something pretty special for me to warrant paying more than that. So I want to get my ev Evasion Mode Optimus Prime for under 45 quid which I could still do if I'm patient and wait for Kapow Toys to get uh, another stock in of the uh, Rusty Mode Lost Age you know, Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. So I looked on, looked on their website again today, still out of stock, so I went on eBay. Looking on eBay, yeah, 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 you've got all the, all the fleeces putting theirs up for lots of money. And then I found another one. Now there is another version of the Evasion Mode Optimus Prime that is in sort of movie correct colours. And he comes in that triple pack. You get Optimus Prime in with the white cab and the sort of the gunmetal legs. And then you have the this car that's a repaint of Generation Skids in the uh, Sonic RS colours, and I think he's called Hot Shot. And then you get a rehash of one of the Dreads, the uh, is it Chevrolet Suburban, 
uh, crankcase from Revenge of the Fallen, and they come in a triple pack. Now I'm not sure. I can't remember what the name of this triple pack is off the top of my head. But anyway, somebody obviously has bought a shed load of these triple packs and is now breaking them up and selling the characters individually. Because this character, this guy, was selling the Evasion Mode Optimus in the movie colours without the uh, rusty patina for thirty six ninety nine. And he was selling them loose on their own without box, but brand new figures. And he's got over 10 of them to sell. And I think, I'm having some of that. Boom, bought it. So I've ordered it. So hopefully it'll arrive next week. Not my first choice of Evasion Mode Optimus, but it'll do. It's not in G1 colours, so that's good enough for me. I could decide to maybe try and get it uh, weathered a bit later on, but it'll do. It's on its way. Speaking of uh, pre-ordered characters, this is something I have ordered from Kapow Toys uh, a while ago. The, uh, I believe it's Amazon exclusive G1 coloured of Age of Extinction Voyager class slog in you know, G1 colours. which isn't due out until, I think, uh, November, October. Kapow Toys is going to be getting that character in. I've pre-ordered one of those, 39 99 plus plus their, their flat rate postage. So that one's on the back burner. As and when they get the stock of those in, I shall be getting one of those, hopefully. So that's another bot that I've got on order. That's uh, that little thing out of the way. Right, on to the next subject. My video week. I have mentioned this before. I plan to do a uh, week of uh, video reviews. Seven days on the trot, seven reviews. I've made a start on doing the reviews already. I've done got the first two reviews in the can. I'm going to you know, keep hold of them until I've got all seven, and then I will decide which week... I'm going to do them. It's, it's kind of difficult because it's going to have to be seven days, starting on a Monday, going through to a Sunday. And as I'm every fortnight, I'm up at Bury over the uh, the weekend. It'll have to be to coincide with a weekend that I'm off, and then I will post one video up every evening at about the same time. So I'm going to start on that. Done the first two reviews, which is this guy. That's Monday's number one. And this guy, Tuesday, number two. But Slash, another the, the reason why I've done the Slash review now is because I've done my custom repaint on my other Slash. Now, I'm just going to give you a quick sneaky peek of him. I'm not going to actually reveal him properly until my video week, but have a look at this. Didn't give too much away, did I? Yeah, so I'm on, I'm on, I'm on going with that. I've sort of figured out what figures I'm going to do. The only problem is because I'm numbering them in sequence of starting with number ten, because obviously all the bots I've reviewed up to now numbers one to nine, starting with number ten, I can't really review any more bots until I've got the video week out of the way, and there are some other bots. That, are, that aren't on the video week list that I want to review, but would have if I did, I'd have to keep them till later. So it's kind of an awkward thing, but so long as I get this this thing done and dusted and out of the way, the sooner the better. Anyway, next thing, Skywarp. Now, if you go back through my videos to my first car boot haul, you remember this chap. The G1 Skywalk that I picked up for 30 pence. Probably the second bot I've picked up at a car boot sale. And it was cheap. But as you can see, he's missing just about everything. The only part he's got is his tail fin, his rudder. Yeah. He's a 31, he's a 30-year-old toy. 
somebody's been chewing his nose cone, so the rubbery bit on the end of his nose cone's been chewed. His decals are all tatty. He's really loose, but he does form a workable bot of a sort. So he does sort of form a robot. But I've decided I'm going to fix this guy up as best I can. And that means buying parts. Now parts are available for these, but again, we're back to the old eBay fleeces. They buy a G1 Seeker for, I don't know, 20, 30 quid or whatever. And then they gut it for all the parts. They sell the parts individually for about, you know, five, four or five quid each. And then when they're finished, they sell, sell, they sell the uh, gutted remains of the robot for, again, about a fiver. And this is going on a lot. And people were, you know, make it, it's a little money-making exercise for certain people. So, I mean, this one, I don't think they, it came to me where they had deliberately stripped the parts off to sell them separately. I don't think so, as why would he have his other tail fin? I think he genuinely came from a home where they'd lost all the bits. But I'm on with this, and at auto assembly, I managed to pick up a part. When I had my last couple of quid left, I went in one of the, the parts bins at one of the one of the stalls, and he's now got a tail. He's now got a, a tail plane. But just the other day, I ordered some more bits off uh, eBay and. A little baggie has arrived today, so let's have a look what's inside. Right, unbagging. PayPal receipt. And one seeker wing! Obviously the decals are a bit tatty, but then again, when I've got this this guy finished, got all these bits, I will buy a set of uh, repro labels for him, clean him up, get him some repro labels, and hopefully he will look uh, something like what he's supposed to. Ah, look, look, he's got a wing. He's, he's like half a plane. <laughs> so this is kind of an ongoing project. Um, I'm not going to spend stupid money buying spare parts for this guy. I'm going to have sort of set myself at a limit of about three to four quid, including the postage. So good luck to me on that. So here's a little little project that's on the back burner, my little Skywalk project. Next, displays, shelves. You've seen my shelf that I've got in my room, and obviously I've got my windowsill and my other little display space next to my telly where I put the big figures. But it's it's very limited. My uh, collection's growing, you know, at a terrific pace, and uh, I, I need more display space. So, you know, how can I do it? Well, as it happens, in this very room, above me, above you, is a load of shelves. And I will uh, just prove the point, because we'll go into uh, camera mode. There we go. Now, you can see there's these shelves of muck up here, of junk. And there's some other junk down here. Now that junk has been cleaned off these shelves. Now these two top shelves, I'm planning to populate them with bots in due course. Obviously it still needs a lot, the rest of this shelf wants sorting out. It's, it's mostly old computer disks, uh, files, empty boxes, CD-ROMs, screw fix catalogues, that sort of stuff, uh, printer cartridges. All sorts of stuff that we uh, do with the computer. But uh, yeah, I have a plan eventually to 
populate it with bots. The now is it the top shelf or the one of these shelves you can just about get Voyager figures on, and the other one I think it's the top shelf you can get Voyager figures on, and the the uh, middle shelf is you can just about get uh, deluxe figures on. Well, let's just 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 try it. Don't fall over. There we go. <laughs> just put them up there for now. So yeah, that's uh, something that I'm looking at. Getting another. Something to getting some more display shelving uh, on the go, which is uh, going to be good, even though this is the spare room, it's not my bedroom, this is just the spare room, spare bedroom, computer room, whatever you call it. So yeah, and uh, I think we're nearly done, I think we've uh, said everything we need to say, apart from one other thing. Uh, just the, the last week, or the week before, I decided to uh, watch Transformers R.I.D. the cartoon series, Robots in Disguise. Uh, I've never seen it before. Fortunately the whole series is on YouTube, so I was able to watch it on YouTube. And uh, I was doing a video, uh, like a, a review video for it, where I gave my opinion of it. Unfortunately, uh, as I was recording it, I made a, a couple of mistakes, and when I <laughs> reviewed the footage and looked it back, it was... Mm. It was a bit of a mess, and I thought, well, sod this, I ain't doing it again, so I boom, deleted it. I don't know where I'll bother doing it again. Uh, it's a good series. Some really, really stupid, silly, ridiculous episodes in it. Um, obviously, I can see why people like Skybite so much. He's the star of the show. He just steals the show. And he uh, he's the winner at the end of the series, where... You know, the Autobots, uh, all the Decepticons and the uh, Predacons have been carted back to Cybertron in, you know, on a prison ship. The Autobots say they're going back to Cybertron. And uh, Skybite's escaped, and the last thing you see is this seascape with Skybite jumping out the water, and you can hear him singing, Who's the smartest shark around? Skybite, that's me! And it's, <laughs> it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed the series. There's some you know, good toys that have come out of it, it, it kind of makes me think mm, maybe I would like to get a couple of figures from the R.I.D. line but it's still <laughs> it's still a bit of a silly show, some of the episodes are totally nonsensical they're just ridiculous, I mean Secret of the D5 is one and the fish test as funny as the fish test is it's still a, a, a silly episode that makes practically no sense at all so yeah, I enjoyed it. it. From what I understand, it was a, it was a, a filler series that, that they did before, you know, after Beast Wars and before the uh, the Unicron trilogy. So it was sort of a uh, sort of like a throwaway series they just threw in there to fill the gap between those two sort of continuations. But it's all right. It, it served a purpose. They sold some toys because of it. Made its money, I suppose. And uh, yeah, so I've watched it. It's all right. And that's, that's all I've got to say about it. And that brings to the end this uh, edition of uh, Chewing the Fat. Uh, like I said, I'm working on my uh, video week videos. Uh, the next one is going to be uh, Beast Hunter's Ripclaw. I'm going to review. And uh, uh, everyone else seems to be gushing over that character, but me, I don't like her. She's going to get a kick in. So, yeah, that's it for now. I will see you guys whenever.